I remember when I was only three, or maybe four years old, and I had this insight about consciousness. I was sitting on the floor in our kitchen playing, and suddenly I realized that my mind wasn't connected to the minds of my parents or my siblings. I was shocked and a bit intrigued. And because this fundamental belief of mine had proved to be wrong, new questions started to arise. Like, how can I ever know for sure that someone else is conscious? What if my family members are just fleshy machines? What if they're robots without emotions or conscious thoughts? This early insight about consciousness was both scary but also very fascinating. And I remember trying to tell my dad about it. But I could only express myself in terms of, Daddy, I feel weird. So of course he couldn't help me. But now, as a PhD student in philosophy, I have the tools to ask the right questions. What is consciousness? And how can we ever know for sure that someone else is conscious? With this talk, I want you to experience the same fascinating and eerie insight I had. And I want you to question what you really think you know about consciousness. And I want you to connect how we gain knowledge about the consciousness of other beings to our current technological development. All of these questions about consciousness are interesting in their own right, but even more so because they are intimately related to questions about moral responsibility. Just think about it. We don't really care about the well-being of a stone or even something more advanced like a computer. But if someone were to kick a cat or hit a baby, we would definitely react. Of course, there are very good reasons not to recklessly kick stones or destroy computers. But being kicked or being hit seems to be bad for the cat and the baby, regardless of any other reasons we might have to condemn that behavior. And the crucial difference here seems to be that the cat and the baby are conscious. There is something it is like to be them. They have an inner light. They're not just empty shells. So in virtue of being conscious, they are part of our moral community. We can't treat conscious beings however we want. With the rapid development of technology, we're being more and more surrounded by artificial intelligence, or AI. We actually interact with AIs on a daily basis. For example, when we use our smartphones. We have apps using face recognition, for example, when we want to tag our friends in photos. We have apps that help us find the fastest route around using GPS technology. And we even have apps that are virtual assistants, like Siri, whom we can ask for a vegan cake recipe just by saying her name out aloud. We are also getting more and more used to hearing experts guess and prophesize about the potential harmful consequences of this AI development. Things like dangers to our privacy 
because of algorithms that analyze and collect our internet activity, or a potential arms race towards more and more autonomous lethal weapons, like killer drones. Some even want to warn us against future super-intelligent AIs posing an existential risks to humanity. I want to try to show why I think the current debate about the harms and benefits of the AI development are a bit too one-sided. And this has everything to do with consciousness. But first, let's do an exercise. I want you to turn to one of your neighbors in the audience, and I want you to take a good look at them and decide whether you think they're conscious or not. Do they seem aware of themselves? Or are they just mindless zombies? I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, yes, no, any mindless zombies in the audience? <laughs> when we decide whether an another person or, not, or another being is conscious or not, we base our judgments on observable information, things we can see and touch and feel. And sometimes, if we have the right equipment, we can even measure things like brain activity. So beings that show the right kind of these observable behavior and signs, we deem as conscious, be it anything from a tiny frog to your neighbor in the audience to a giant blue whale. But how could we ever know for sure that an AI was conscious? Some have proposed that we should set the AI up for a test. And if it meets this or that set of criteria, then it's conscious. An example of a test like this is to let an AI interact with humans, for example, using a chat program. And if the AI manages to convince enough humans that it is a human, then it's conscious. But some of you might not agree. I mean, just emulating consciousness is not the same as actually being conscious, right? But wait just a minute. When you were observing your friends in the audience, you could only base your judgment on observable information. We can never access another being's mind directly. We only have observable information to ground our decision. So regardless if a being is artificial or natural, we only have these observables to work with. And our intuitive tests that you just now used might not be as explicit as a standardized test for AI consciousness, but it's still based on the same principles, observable information. So if a future AI would prove to be conscious by showing the right observable signs and behavior, like a complex household robot or a really intelligent software, would we be ready for the moral consequences? Can it be that the risk analysis we do when we consider the AI development are biased? 
I mean, looking back at human history and the current state of society, we don't always hold a good track record for how we treat each other and non-human animals. I'm thinking about things like war, slavery, colonization, discrimination and hate. I'm also thinking of how we treat non-human animals in factory farms, in labs, and how we destroy natural habitats. In light of all this, would it really be wise to potentially create a whole new category of sentient beings? Sentient beings that are designed and put into this world with the sole purpose to fulfill human ends? If future AIs would show the right kind of observable signs and behavior for consciousness, I don't think that they would only pose a risk to us. We might pose a much greater threat to them. And as four-year-olds sometimes have intuitions about, we can never have direct access to another being's mind. So if an entity would show the right kind of observables for consciousness, it shouldn't matter if it's made of flesh, or of circuits, or maybe both. Its mere existence demands our moral concern. But the question is, are we ready to take on that moral responsibility? Thank you. Thank you.